In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are mixing things up a little bit. We are working on the mirror from our feature film, Key to the City. But before we dive into that, I want to show you something very special, very limited. We have an all new so good. limited edition poster. Look. This is by uh, Jess Doney, who's a Mighty Car Mods fan, um, who did this image for us. We have these signed posters. These are going to be around for one week, uh, and then they're gone. They're gone forever. We will never do this, uh, this design again. We will be signing your orders individually, and these are available from the Mighty Car Mods Click shop. Click the thing. So there's a thing dropping down, MightyCarMods.com, limited edition mirror poster. There's the car. There's the car. It's very exciting. So that's the good news. That's so grab one of them now because they'll probably be gone by the next time uh, you have a look in a week's time. The good news is that... The not so good news is that I parked my car and when I came back to my car, as so often happens, someone has put something on my bonnet, walked away, come back and gone, I'll just grab my stuff. <laughs> like that. That has gone there like, and then just... A box shaped... Like Massive that. scratch. No, we did not do it. Yes, when we painted the wheels years ago, that was him with a brick. This is not what happened in this case. I um, only noticed it yesterday because I brought it in here and turned the lights on and went, oh, I got my car! Because this car's freshly painted. Freshly painted. And I'm freshly painted very from careful scratch. about where I park it, like a lot of people modified cars. So today, we're going to fix it. <laughs> Normally there's happy music on the intro bit, but there's sad music because there has been more hours of love and work gone into this car than pretty much any mm. other project um, on Mighty Car Mods. This is the one that's got the restitched floor. This is the one that was half Australian car, half Japanese car, put back together. It's like so much work, it's not funny. We had a whole group of us working on it, lots of help. And so when the car is all perfect and it's all done, and then you have something like this, it's yep. actually what we call a wormhole. It sucks in all of your time and emotional energy, and that is why it must be fixed. That's why it must be fixed. Now, luckily, it looks like a lot of the damage is in the clear coat. Um, it's, it's scratched from like different angles, so it's, it's, it looks the size and shape of a box, um, which is probably what happens, because people go oh, to the this shopping way, center. Though, right? You can see. People go to the shops. I mean, you see it all the time. They get their shopping bags, and they, they put it on your roof or your thing, and then they turn around and put stuff in the car and go, huh, like that, because they don't want to lift it up. Um, and Dude, that's the exact angle, actually, the way you just did it, yeah, like that. That's exactly. the way these go. And it's super obvious in this, because this is recently painted, it's got quite thick clear coat on it, it's been buffed, it's been paint protected, it's had all this stuff done to keep it looking awesome, because you just wash it and it looks this shiny, um, which is really cool, but something like this is super obvious and it needs to be sorted out. So, we're going to go through a couple of ways that you can fix this. Um, we're going to get a special friend of ours to come and give us some tips, because he's a pro and does this all day, every day, um, which will help. And we might even dig out one of the old panels from this car and do some yeah. experiments. This here is the original panel that was on the car in Japan when we were drifting it under rainbows. As you can see, it does have a bit of damage from its time in Japan, but this here is what we're going to practice on. It already looked pretty beat up before it got cut in half, but then when it got cut in half and put into a pallet, into a container, this was the outside, and this is what we picked off a little while back when we put the mirror together. This car was $300 in Japan. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, like, you know, it's, it wasn't exactly so pristine. what we thought we might do that might be interesting, rather than just dive straight into that, we might try and educate ourselves a little bit about the different ways that we can sort of repair some of this stuff. Now, this is fairly extreme, like big scratches like that that threw all the paint, you're not gonna be able to repair those. But ones like this, that's actually similar to what we've got on the bonnet. It is. So we thought we might tape it up and try a few different products because one of the issues with repairing things like this is there's lots of products out there that promise you the world that say they'll fix every scratch with just a little thing and you've only got to go on like a social media thing and see one yep. of those, you know, fast forward ads where people are like, fixes everything just with one. I saw a magic cloth thing that is literally just like this and it said the cloth had nano particles in it. Right as does a beach and a beanbag. Uh, no, but it had nanoparticles and it basically showed this mm. and then that someone wipes it over like this and it said before and after and had a picture of a BMW, but the BMW had different wheels on it <laughs> afterwards. Like it actually was a different car. Well, so they're just completely We can be fairly it. certain if you've watched enough Mighty Carmel's videos that this is the same panel that was on that car. Not that it matters what we're doing now. But what we'll do is, um, I'm just gonna wipe all the dust off it so we can see what we're dealing with. And then we'll just try a couple of different things to see what we can fix up yep. and hopefully apply some of those techniques to that um, 
And yeah. yeah, so we've got some different products. We're going to do some of it by hand. We're going to use some machines. Um, and we're just going to see what works. And then we'll have an expert come and tell us that probably everything we've done is wrong <laughs> and actually show us how to do it properly uh, so he can help us fix that. We're using wax and grease remover to take off any dust and contaminants, then taping the panel into sections so we can compare each of our products both typical and experimental. We've got a lot of products laid out here on this panel. We've got little markers between each of them so we can do some tests and show you some science. We're actually not showing you science, we're just showing you results. Martin, what are we going to do? We're going to start with WD-40. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you polish your car with it, but we've heard rumours that you can do this, so we're going to try it and just see what and happens. And we've had good success polishing wheels with that. We have, exactly. So it works good on metal. Don't know how it's going to work on paint. We're going to find out. Uh, we've also got a few different levels of the sort of cuts and cleaners and stuff that you can buy from various shops. This is like... A, a bargain entry level type thing, um, cutting compound. We're going to try that. Then we've got like a mid-level one. This is where you're paying a little bit more money for it. It promises to do a few more things. And then we're um, going pro, mate. And then we've got like a pro level one um, that we've used with great success in the past as well. Covered all the logos just because it doesn't matter. Go to the shop and you can work out exactly what's what. Um, now coming up next, Martin, this is where we've got some interesting science. stuff. We have had some great success in the past. Uh, a combination of urine and toothpaste. There's no urine in there yet. There will be soon. Just giving you Give me a minute. Uh, and also, avocado, which you may have seen in the past, we had great success buffing headlights to get rid of all of that cloudy stuff with avocado, so we're going to be using that as well. Now, Martin, we just need a control, because it's science, control of how they're applied and how they're buffed. So let's show the people that, and then let's kick the music and get into the experiment. First up, we have to apply the products. There's two ways to do that. You can do it by hand, or you can use various machines. This is what's known as a rotary buffer. Yes, it looks like an angle grinder because it basically is one. And you can buy these pads. Um, you can buy different kind of pads, one that are specifically for cutting different grades. We've got a black one, which is more for finishing, but for what we're gonna do today, this will be totally fine. Or you can apply it by hand with something like that, which is basically just a little sponge. Now, once the products are applied with that, then they're gonna be buffed off. There's a couple of ways you could do it. You could buff them off by hand using some little microfiber cloths, or you could use something like this, which is a cordless buffer. Now, we just, uh, Ryobi didn't actually send us this, we just went and bought it retail, $99, but full disclosure, Ryobi is a sponsor of the show. But this here is a battery-operated buffer that says it's good for cars. Get out! Get out! And this here is um, not how you open the box. So, I've never seen this product before, but that's gonna go on there. There's a battery. I gather somewhere on here there's a button. There Whoa, it is. That made that and did a weird off it goes. thing to my ears. So we're going to put a little buffer on there. Pad. Look at Soft that. Thing. So these are really good, particularly if you're like waxing a car or something. Um, or where a you, boat. Or a boat. Or a dolphin. Um, particularly that's what they're for. Now the rotary thing I showed you before, that's for getting a lot of heat and friction into the panel and like removing stuff. This is really good, particularly if you are applying wax or something that needs to be removed, but without actually cutting into the surface. Look at that. That's good. It pretty much saves you a whole lot of elbow grease of using microfibers back and forth for 10 minutes that'll do it in a couple of seconds and cool. battery powered which is excellent okay martin let's get into it let the science begin all right step one wd i got high hopes for the wd <laughs> mate <laughs> um so we're going to apply it look it looks good because oh, we are rubbing we've had a blowout on the urine bottle we're, we're we're rubbing in like a lubricant and a like thinner type material into the panel so look it looks amazing I, I don't know that I'd recommend coating your entire car in WD-40, um, but you can't argue with that. What it's not doing is taking out any scratches, and I don't think it's going to because it's not really abrasive. I'm going to unfill this off. urine bottle because it just keeps falling down. I'll be back in a minute. I think it's fairly safe to say that that's not going to remove any scratches. It looks nice and shiny because we've essentially rubbed an oil into our panel. Um, so I'm going to call it a win. Next up, we have your bargain basement. Um, cutting compound. This is the kind of stuff you can buy at your supermarket or even a servo. Um, it, full disclosure, it's been sitting in the cupboard for a little while, so it'll be interesting to see how well it actually works. But it pretty much just looks like that, and you just apply it to the panel. And this is designed to cut back scratches and stuff like that as well. So you apply it by hand and just rub it on. Imagine it as like liquid sandpaper. Um, by hand, it is going to take some time. Um, these, all these compounds and polishes and stuff, the more sort of mechanical friction you can put into it, the quicker it's going to go. But you can get results by hand as well. So if you've got a little scratch, this will take it out. It will also take off like any wax or anything else that's on your paint as well. So be aware of that, that if you cut this back, you're cutting back actually abrading the clear coat that's on it. Or if it's a single color car, then you're actually cutting back the paint itself, which you mostly see on older cars. This is clear over base, so it has like the metallic and then the clear coat over the top. 
So there you go. There's a little bit of crap coming off. You can usually check the sponge and just see what's on there. And this, this all, you also notice if your paint's really dirty that it'll start to discolour the sponge. So that's applied. You can rub it and rub it and rub it and keep rubbing it. And we take that off with another cloth and see what it looks like. It should shine up a little bit, hopefully. There we go, mate. Let's see what we've got. Yeah. It's definitely shinier. It's taken off like any kind of haze of rot that's on there. Although at the moment it looks pretty similar to our WD-40. There we go. We'll know at the end, Martin, but there we go. There's a bit of yeah. dirt and a bit of stuff coming off. Good. Next up, we'll Success. move to the kind of mid-range. This is your kind of super cheap auto cut and polish, isn't it? Yep, exactly. You kind of this is gonna set you back. Range. Rather than setting you back sort of like 10 bucks, this is gonna like set you back. 20 or 25? 30 or 30, yeah, probably close to that. Um, this is also a cut cutting compound as well. Um, you can get various levels. A lot of the time they have a scale on the bottle that tells you what sort of level of cut it's gonna give you and based on how scratched or how dirty it is, um, you can choose what you need. You apply it, rub it on. This action now is what's actually gonna remove any scratches or imperfections. Um, you really gotta get into it or it doesn't do anything at all. All right, using a different bit of this cloth. Martin, that's actually looking pretty good. It looks good, yeah. It's taken out a bit more of the scratches. But by hand, it's always... Yeah, actually, can't argue with that. That looks pretty good. Like, some of the really light scratches are in it. Some of these heavier ones are still there. You know what I reckon we do afterwards, once we've done this, is I reckon we use then a machine for each of them quickly again. Try so again. machine, 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 yeah. then buff off with the Ryobi as well. Cool. All right, let's try the Pro one. Next up, we have like a Pro Grade um, compound. So this is the kind of thing that panel shops will use. Um, Painters and detailers and stuff all have their own, you know, preferences of what to use based on their experience. Uh, but this is a good one that we have used in the past with some success. It's also, if you're doing this all day, every day, a lot of the time the kind of products that you're going to use are going to be ones that might be like less dust come out of them when you buff them off. Maybe they're water-based so they're not as hard to clean out of all your materials and you can reuse your sponges and all that kind of stuff. So that's sort of what comes into it with a pro level one. And, people and th that are... these are direct to detail. Like you can't buy these at a shop. They're not a retail product, no. It's the no. kind of thing that you, you get at a panel shop and you'd buy in bulk because you'd go through a lot of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, most of these are designed to be used with a machine, but we're going to do it by hand first and see what kind of results we get. And then we might try it with the machine as well. Okay, that's on. All right, get rid of that one. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, that looks pretty good, yeah. doesn't it? Straight away, it's at least as good as that one and looks nice and shiny. But it's actually, you can see it's cutting and it's taking a bit of the dirt off as well. Yep. Use a clean, use a clean towel every time you take it off. Yeah, so this is a new one or I'm kind of turning over, but this is a new towel. You know what? It just looks a bit smoother than that. Yeah. Uh, creamier, yeah, you know what does. I mean? Yeah. There's still some of the deeper a bit more scratches finished. in. Hard to see it on a black panel as well sometimes, but... That looks pretty good. So I reckon we'll, um, we might do the same thing with the various three various compounds that we've used and hit it with the machine and just see if that gets any more off it. This is where you can damage your car if you use a machine like this and you use a compound incorrectly. So read up, be careful, takes a bit of practice, go slow, get an old panel, try it out first. And when you're confident, then do it on your car. Let's do it. But after that, we actually get to the science and see whether an avocado, which we have had legitimately excellent results with in the past, works or... Um, the warm urine. <laughs> Why is it warm? And the toothpaste, because it's fresh. Uh, and the toothpaste as well, we're going to try those as well. And we have had some success with them in the past, so we'll see. So we'll machine the proper products first, yep. and then we'll see how they hold up against these bad boys. Man. Let's do it. So we've used the machine on all the cutting compounds, the various levels. They've all kind of done basically the same job. You can see that the machine abrades it way more and it actually feels smooth as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty cool. Nothing's going to save these big scratches that have gone all the way through the clear coat, but any areas that don't have damage, they look, they look great. Like if your whole car had paint of that level that was a bit faded, yep. 
and you just buffed it, it would look amazing. What's interesting from what we can see is that the pro level stuff looks the best, yeah. like unquestionably. Like yeah, you can see that that is better than it's anything else so glossy. that we've done so far. The mid range one though looks really good. The difference between these two is not huge, no. but the difference between these two is huge, which yeah. means don't go for the really, really cheap stuff. Um, go, go for the mid range stuff. So that's, we basically got winner, a close second and lucky last and yeah. WD, well, we didn't use a machine on that, but it is what it is. And I reckon if you're desperate, you can probably use that. But still, we haven't even got to the good stuff yet, people. The important stuff. So now it's time. Next up, we've got toothpaste and urine. What's interesting about that, that is as good as that, but not as good as these two. Yes, I would agree. Okay, so it's done something. It's done something. So teeth, it's better than that. Toothpaste and urine looks equivalent to the cheapest product we use, but not nearly as good as these two. But it's also taken off all this rubbish when you compare it to next door. Like, look at that. That's yeah. still smashed. But now, people, we're into the good stuff, yeah. which is the avocado. I got high hopes, so let's kick into it. Since the video we did all those years ago with avocado, there has been some contention in the comments about Conjecture. whether you use the skin or whether you use the flesh. Basically, we're just going to keep rubbing the skin until the goo comes out. Without the avocado, though. The avocado is proving a little bit more challenging. Dude, it's done something. It's done something. Look. Look. It actually, it does work, man. It's just put a lot of avocado in my fuel filler flat. But look, that's way cleaner than it was. It's actually cleaned the paint. I don't know if I'd call it polish or compound, but I'd call it paint cleaner. Really? Yeah. Look how clean that is. Wow. I would say it's more effective than piss. <laughs> <laughs> in our highly scientific, peer-reviewed study in which we were rated five stars... Do you know who rated us that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got our panel. Now, unsurprisingly, the compounds did what you'd expect. The WD-40 came off as soon as I, like, removed the stuff with the alcohol because it's basically oil. Looks better than nothing, but it didn't take off any scratches. Exactly. And if you're buying a used car, be careful of that because sometimes unscrupulous car dealer people occasionally will coat an entire car in silicon or oil or something like that. So Engine it looks base particularly. amazing. Engine base particularly. Have a good the first time you wash it, it ends up looking like this panel. So keep an eye out for that. That's a good example of how it works. The compounds work well. This one's the smoothest. A lot of this is about feel as well. You can feel how it's taken off all the sort of bumps and scratches and stuff like that. The professional that. one is the most professional. It is. Um, the toothpaste and piss is the most useless, I reckon, in terms of the alternative methods. But Better this than water. One, Better than water. But this one... The that avocado is, the, is amazing. So is over here is our control. One. The avocado, we were just trying to hypothesize maybe the outside of this because it's kind of hard, it's kind of like a rubbery sandpaper. But then it was also hypothesized avocado oil. It's, it's, a, thing. it's a thing. And it's used for oiling things. And in a sense, we have nourished the panel. So the winner is the professional product it's for the DIYness. It's the avocado. Yep. What we still haven't done yet, though, is fixed the car. But luckily, our mate Trung is coming over. And then he's probably going to go, this is all bullshit, and just get out <laughs> something completely different that and works. show us how to fix it. But he's on his way here now. So let's get to actually fixing the problem we started with, which is Marty's shagged bonnet. Yo! Hey! hey. hey. How, how you doing, mate? mate? Smells like piss in here. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? We just were doing a scientific experiment over here. Checking out different ways to repair paint, and urine was used. All right. Yeah. What do you reckon? Which you use in your professional paint shop, right? <laughs> <laughs> which one? Which one do you reckon is the best? Yeah, don't look at this. Which piece of that panel looks the best? The fuel flap. The fuel flap. Avocado. No yes. way. Yeah, it doesn't. That's the nice. avocado. It's smooth, man. It's all oiled up. Well done. So, um, yeah, we thought we'd experiment with some stuff on there, but this is obviously the fresh paint that's on the mirror. And um, I might have got a little bit of polish on it, so sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I think someone put a box on it. It looks like a box went on it, and then a box went off it, and it's gone scratch, scratch, scratch the whole way down. Can you show us what you're going to use? Like, yeah. can you lay it out and show us what... Because I want to see how different it is to 
Yeah, of course. What we've been using. <laughs> <laughs> We're repairing the scratched paint by polishing or buffing it out using a compound, which is another word for polish. Stage systems result in the shiniest, smoothest finish possible. All right, so we are ready to go. Now you've got gloves, we're going to shake hands. Welcome to the Mighty Car Mods HQ. All right, run us through what you're going to do, mate, so we can try and do it ourselves later and wreck our bonnet. <laughs> All right, so I'll get some 3M grit, uh, 3000 grit, just give it a sand with a bit of water, mm -hmm. and then 5000. And then Sanding after... it with water is known as a wet sand, right? Yeah, wet okay, sand, yep. believe it or not, good. And then after, we'll wipe it down and then hit it with a buff. Okay. And does the buff have a product on it? A very a specific um, product yeah, as well? Yeah, so just step one, uh, stage one, 3M, yep. with a Roops green green pad. Cool. How yep. far do we go? Like, do we get up to tune and exhaust as well? Do we get stage two? Or we just go on stage one today, just the, just the um, flash? We'll go to three stages. Yes! <laughs> We love three stages. It's not that uncommon for some car owners to spend thousands of dollars on paint correction on brand new cars that have just come straight from the factory. The term detailing really does apply here when you consider the hours of work involved and the various products required to do this really well. First you've got to smear it yep. and then the, the first pass will sort of, you're smearing it and you're letting the grit do its work mm -hmm. and then the second pass all the oxide cutters have diminished, so you're sort of buffing those coarser scratches out and then before you move on to the next step. And how much pressure are you sort of applying when you do it? Because it's kind of hard to see. Are you really pushing into it or is it just the weight of the machine? Um, it depends on how deep the scratches are. So because we've already 3,000 and then 5,000 grit, you can pretty much, you can sort of hand polish it, it mm -hmm. will come out, but obviously it's a lot faster with this. Yeah. And, but you don't have to apply that much pressure. A lot of it should come out. Yeah, it already looks mad. So we're just seeing the product sort of swirl up there. Hey. Yeah. Oh wow, so it's like mirror finish. The the second pass will be you sort of let the pressure off a bit. Yeah. So that all sort of makes it less coarse cutting. With a different product. Uh, with the same thing. Oh, same one. Same one, but just sort of release the pressure a bit. Go for it, mate. <laughs> all right, here we go. I'll oh, we'll spread it first, just slowly, right? Yeah, just give it a dab. Just move it just around. Like a that. Bit. Yep. Dab it around. All right, here we go. And keep it flat? Yeah, keep it flat. Yep. I don't know if that works. What do you reckon? Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, just... Yeah, so... Hey, the scratch is gone. Yeah. There's some really light ones still there. Yeah. But I but... might have done that. <laughs> <laughs> With the deep scratches removed with the first stage compound, the finer compounds will remove any marks left over from the second and again for the third, each one a little smoother than the previous. To finish it off, Trung is going to apply some Carnuba wax which will help achieve a mirror finish. Applying it by hand warms it up and it can then be buffed to a shine with a microfiber towel. Remember, the best way to fix scratches is to not get them in the first place. Don't put stuff on other people's cars, be aware of opening doors on windy days, return that shopping trolley and just generally try and be a team player when it comes to mad looking rides. Professional products work because they're made for doing professional things, but if you really need to go for a homemade solution, then Avocado is going to give you a better result than urine. We did it so you don't have to. And just look at the finished results, the mirror is incredible. Around about 24 hours ago, life was a bit lemony. I had my mad mirror with big scratches on it because someone dragged something over the bonnet. It was upsetting me a lot. And because of my good friend here, we've now turned it into some, some delicious, glossy lemonade. I don't know if it's because of me. I mean, we were meant to be doing another episode today of unloading a box full of JDM parts that we got from Japan. Not very And then Marty's like, look what happened to my thing. And I was like, <laughs> let's just make a video. It's a car, it needs work. That's kind of what we do. How are you feeling, Martin? I'm stoked. It's, it's, it's amazing. It looks good. We learned some stuff with our experimentation that we've been wanting to do for a long time. We did. My bonnet's fixed. Trung taught me how to use a buff, which I'm still a little bit scared of, I'm not going to lie. Thank and you, Trung, by the way. What a legend. Thank you very much for coming and down. And we've still got the big box of JDM goodies right up there that we're going to unpack in an upcoming episode. That's right. Of course, if you do want one of the limited edition Mira posters, so cool. these will be signed and we ship them worldwide. You can get them now. I just Martin's, to, Martin's going I, to get the previous one. I just one. want to show um, you how These good. will be individually signed. They're not printed or anything. If you order one, Look at them we side actually by sign side on your wall. our name on it. If you've got one of the previous ones, you can hang them side by side. But if you don't, or you missed out on that one, 
This is your chance. They're available right now, but they are limited. Never doing this design again. Once they're gone, they're gone. Martin, I suggest we go feast on some male yak milk. Really? Yes. I want yak milk ice cream. Would really? you go that? Do you know some people, there's human boob ice cream? No, I'm For not a little into that. while they had that, want, but then yak, they banned it. You got it me on the yak milk. Booby milk ice cream. That would make me yak.